not safe anywhere, are you? Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I've, uh, I've had a busy week, so I thought today I'd come out to the woods just to chill out a little bit and shoot some photographs, obviously on film. And I've brought out with me today a camera that I haven't used for a while, for no other reason than I haven't used it for a while. The Mamiya RZ67, which isn't the easiest cameras to walk around with uh, in the woods, you know, they're quite heavy, it's like a big old brick in your hands, but it's a quality camera and I do like shooting it. So I bought this out today, I'm gonna put this on the tripod. You can hear a woodpecker in the background. Can you hear that? There he goes, hear that woodpecker. And for me, it's a perfect day to come out and take some photographs in the woods. There's not a cloud in the sky, so I certainly don't want any landscape stuff. But I always come out with a plan. And today I thought, if I'm gonna to go to the woods, what am I gonna take photographs of rather than me walking around and trying to discover stuff and think, oh, you know, what should I do, what should I do? I decided to just go for leaves. So I'm not gonna go for any wide shots or anything like that. I'm just gonna go for leaves on trees. Um, and I'm gonna be shooting Foma Pan 200. Now this is a film that I often, very rarely, sorry, I should say shoot uh, the Foma Pan range. I have had some troubles with this stuff in the past with um, imperfections on the negatives, uh, especially on the 120, but I thought I've got a few rolls of this stuff, uh, 200 Foma Pan, so I thought I'd come out and give it a try at least and uh, see how I get on with it. I've also bought out some FP4 that I'm gonna shoot off camera, but the stuff you see in this video, I'm gonna shoot with the Foma Pan. Rewind that film back. And I'm gonna now put some music in my ears and continue for another hour with the FP4. I'll show you those photographs. So that's the FOMA 200 loaded inside the camera. I've also got obviously a cable release as well. Um, I've got my light meter. I've got a gray card that I made out of an old t-shirt, all tested out, this one I use all the time. Uh, so my metering is gonna be done on a gray card, just place the gray card next to the subject and take a spot reader reading from it. Um, I've also got some filters as well. I might try out uh, a yellow and a green, just see how I'll get on with them. Um, I've also got a can of Coke and a smile, in case I get thirsty. I also brought out some water. The idea of the water is I'm just going to trickle it on some of the leaves and try and get something, um, you know, sort of emulate that it's been raining. I'm going to go for a yellow filter and I'm going to keep the yellow filter on all the time. These are coking filters that I've got. So if I just put the yellow filter on, keep that on all the time, and I've just got to remember to meter about a stop, more exposure to compensate for the filter. So I'll stick that in the camera. And this is what I'm talking about. So this looks quite nice. Um, I'm looking for leaves, obviously, that are in nice light. I don't want any leaves that are in the shade. It's just gonna be flat and dull. But this, you've got so many different um, uh, depths going on, you know, the light, a little bit less light, dark around here. I've also got a little tree in the background, which these are, I don't know what this is, ivy or something. It's creeping on the tree. So I put my gray card like so, just do a little spot meter on it. I've had to come around this side because that sun has just moved away from where I was. Interesting. So I'll come this side. Okay, 160 for a second, 5.6. We'll come from 30 for a second, 5.6. And I need to allow another half a stop for my bellows. So I'll come down to about just under 5.6. Dark slide out. Shot done. No. So it's give, this one's given me f8 one sixtieth of a second, so I'll come down to 5.6, keep it at one sixtieth, allow for the bellows factor. Um, just drip it down slightly, one third of a stop under 5.6. That should be all right. Focused up, that's nice. Done. 
I'm just walking through and I've seen this wonderful little composition here with all this moss, some leaves going on as well. I've kind of come off track what I said I'd be doing, but I couldn't resist this. Decide where I want to focus, that looks quite nice. Look at that, it comes out. This one's 5.6 at one fourth of a second, this fern, just right now while the wind's not blowing. So that's four photographs taken already. This is absolutely beautiful. I'm just walking around here. There's nice sun coming through. It's not too cold. There's hardly anyone about. And all I can hear really is planes going over and uh, the birds, that woodpecker. Now and again, someone walks past with a dog. It's just so beautiful and peaceful, you know, to take photographs. I said it's quiet. There's a bloody tractor over there. Ooh, the tractor getting here. And this is what I said in the comments, someone said in the comments the other day on one of my other videos that I said, uh, you know, even if I go back without, even if these, this film gets messed up for some reason and I haven't got any decent photographs, I've had a great walk. And someone said, well, surely that's the point of photography is coming back with good photographs. Yeah, of course it is, but what else are you going to do if you go back with bad photographs? Beat yourself up over it? I always say to myself, well, I've had a good walk, I've had a good time talking to you guys. <laughs> And uh, I've enjoyed myself, you know, I've got out of the house and I'm going for a walk with my cameras, playing with these old things. Oh, for f sake, who the f are laughing, you know? The state of these nigs, I'm underexposed, I'm underexposed. No, they're all right. Oh, come on. The point of going out and taking photographs if I make with negatives like this. I like walking down the woods, taking photographs for them to come out underexposed. It's all good. I was happy, I liked it, I enjoyed myself. <laughs> So I find this entry interesting, this, this old log, or this tree trunk sitting here, and it's got all this moss and leaves growing over it. Done. I've just spotted this tree over here in sunlight, hopefully I can get the shot, ow, get the shot in. Oh, just took a picture on its own. I need to get out of the way. So I've composed this so I've got kind of half of the tree trunk and you've got a blurry background over there. So all those shots I just took with the yellow filter on, I'm going to switch over to the green filter just for my own sanity and see what that does. I've never had much luck with a green filter, I've always managed to, oh shit, drop them. I've always managed to um, get underexposed shots with a yeah, with the green filter. I'll just put the green filter in there for a minute. What I need to do is just meter through the green filter and see what that's giving me. That's probably the best way of doing it. But with filters, um, generally the colour filter will complement the colour. So if you're shooting a tomato with a red filter, the tomato will come out lighter. If you're shooting a banana with a yellow filter, the banana will come out lighter. If you're shooting green stuff with a green filter, the green stuff will come out lighter. And the idea is for it to give you a little bit more definition um, in your photograph. The, the green stuff without the green filter, they say, comes out, can come out quite dark. Depends what film you're shooting. Um, but let's get on with this. And then we'll put the filter in. Two stops, let's come down to eighth of a second. I think it says one and a half stops for this filter on the Coking website. We'll see how it works. I'm gonna take the green filter out anyway and continue with the yellow. No, photography's not always at waist level, you know, or eye level. I'm shooting up beyond these old leaves that are, that are dead. Got it. Oh, I had to wait for the wind to stop. It's not even windy. This is quite nice in this picture. I've got some of this trunk here of all this ivy going up it, some of this bushland at the bottom. Take the shot. Done. Not safe anywhere, are you? <laughs> I said it was tranquil and quiet up here. 
must be doing some forestry works. And this is what I bought the water out for. Just to throw some drops, shine the leaves up a little bit, like so. Like it's been raining. <laughs> it's giving me some highlight, but we'll get some of that off. See how that looks. The only trouble is I've done myself no favours there at all. I've given um, myself some highlights. I really should have done it this side. Ah, well, that's a nice one there. Done. So some of those foam and pan 200 negatives came out all right and some of them didn't. Some of them was a bit underexposed I noticed but the ones that wasn't overexposed looked really nice. Nice fine grain and bags of tonality in there so you know I, I'm not going to sit there and slate a film just because I may have made a mistake in the metering and underexposed a shot. I know a lot of people enjoy foam and pan 200 and have got it down to an art with their own development and their own cameras and their own photography process. And as for the green filter I've, I've never managed to get that right. I don't know if my green filter was wrong. I don't know. What do you reckon? The coking filter that I've got, the green one. Whenever I use it, I just underexpose, even though I allowed two stops for that. I think even if I had allowed three stops, I still wouldn't have seen lighter green. So I might have to try another green filter. Let us know in the comments if you've got one of those coking green filters and how it works for you, <laughs> works for you because it don't seem to work my one for me. Never has. But the main point of the video is going out and taking some photographs in the woods in some spare time, trying to play around with that foam of 200. And, you know, that's why I took the FP4, because um, I wasn't too confident shooting it. But uh, I'll go through some of the pictures and what I think of them. So that was the very first one that I took. And you can see clearly that one is underexposed. Nice composition, but uh, underexposed. Maybe in a dark room on a print, I could have made that look quite nice. Um, even in Photoshop, I could still try and make it nice. But uh, these are just DSLR scans. The next one I did in the foam art, that one came out quite nice, loads of tonality there. I did notice that I've got some very light scratches on that foam of film, possibly where I scanned them. So it makes me think that this foam of stuff is, you know, it's um, easily scratchable. Uh, that was quite a nice one. Bags of sharpness in there as well, very sharp. As for that picture there, the composition, I think that's quite nice with the moss on the logs. Nice tonality in that one. Uh, that was a bit underexposed as well, but I managed to sort of pull that back out a little tiny bit. Uh, that little log, that didn't come out too too bad, but I could have done with uh, shooting that maybe let F11 or F16 and got more depth of field going on in the background, so that wasn't too great, I suppose. Uh, that one there, a little tiny bit out of focus. On, oh no, that was the one that the camera accidentally went off. Um, I was just trying to compose and the camera went off. I was just about to pull that one apart. That was the next shot. That was quite nice, nice composure. But again, you can see these leaves are green. Uh, maybe a green filter, if I could get it right, would have done its job by lightening these green leaves up. Um, but uh, they do seem a little bit dark. Nice composition, though. Uh, that was the one where I tried without the green filter. I felt that one was a little bit underexposed. Uh, that was without the green filter. And then with the green filter, allowing two stops. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, that was one of the dead leaves, and then the other dead leaf. I like that one. I like dead leaves. I think this one's got some nice tones going on it, and uh, some nice highlights as well. So that foam has handled that really well, that one. Uh, totally underexposed that. Look at that. That's awful. That tree came out quite nice. Uh, that was just before the van, uh, when the van was coming along. I just about got that shot before the van ran me over. Uh, that tree came out really nice. I just like the way all the, all the leaves, all the um, shrubs, all the bush at the bottom here. And that tree is just totally coked in all this uh, growing ivy there. And that one was just some more leaves with some sun on, some dead leaves. And that one there, that was a real mess really. Um, I should have maybe shot that in, in shade rather than in the sunlight because the, the water that I put on the leaves just com <laughs> completely gave me highlights. Uh, where the sun was just shining off the water. But, you know, it was uh, just the last shot. I thought I'd try it out. Maybe I could have took a spray bottle or something and uh, did some spraying rather than just throw the water on. But, um, <laughs> yeah. And I've already showed you the FP4 shots that I took uh, when I wasn't vlogging. I just literally put the uh, GoPro in my bag and went off and took photographs. That's another one there where the... Um, uh, the, the camera went off on its own. I, I've got a problem with my uh, shutter release cable. It's not pulling off. So when I advance the um, camera, the buttons, the shutter buttons already pressed in. So when I advance the camera, it just takes a shot 
That was quite creative though. Look at that little sun flare going on there. So yeah, these were the FP4 ones and these came out nice. Um, I like the log one there with the highlights. That's a nice one there with the bottom of that big tree trunk. The stump of the tree there. That one came out a little bit underexposed. Um, some holly. Again, this was an interesting. I found a tree with a feather sticking inside it. Look, someone had put that. I can't imagine that feather fell in there. I can only imagine someone put that feather there. But uh, I found that interesting. Took the picture there. Nice and sharp as well on the um, feather where I'd focused. Just another woodland shot. And that was probably my favourite out of the whole shoot. This little tiny bird's feather had stuck on the... Uh, on this little branch here. Just the log, I just liked all the detail in this log. For some reason I took that photograph. And another one there with the branch going up the tree. I just find it interesting how all this wildlife, uh, all this wildlife, all, all these, uh, all this nature can just start clinging to itself like that tree and growing up it. And that one there, it was uh, a light coloured leaf against a dark coloured leaf in the sun. You can just see the sun shining on the other leaf there. So those were the photographs that I took. I certainly preferred the FP4 ones than the FOMA 200, but I, I, I can't remember the last time I'd shot FOMA 200, to be honest with you, and if I had done, it's only been a handful of times. Uh, I've mostly shot FOMA 400, but with the FOMA 200, it's just a case of getting used to a film, getting used to the development and your own photography process and making it work for you. I'll have to practice with the FOMA 200 and see its strong points and weaknesses with my personal photography uh, especially out in the woods in bright sun using a grey card to meter on but uh, the FP4 ones came out all right so it wasn't a complete waste of time I enjoyed myself walking around the woods and taking photographs and making a video for you guys to see I'll catch you next time